Good evening, Pio Nation. I hope you're having a great Friday. My name is Matt Williamson, and you're watching Marion College Esports. Tonight, we have our Rainbow Six team going up against the Baylor University. So we are very excited for this as part of Collegiate R6. Uh, so we are starting just a little bit earlier than normal because we have a very special broadcast uh, for this. Uh, we're going to be doing dual commentary with one of the commentators for Baylor University. So he and I are going to be talking together, which is probably a good thing because he's going to know way more about this game than I do. So this should be uh, highly entertaining and highly informative. Uh, so we're going to get uh, jumped into the Discord in just a minute. So let's go over the uh, complete roster of our Rainbow Six team. If I can hit the right buttons here on the Elgato, that would be great. All right, so tonight um, we will have uh, Large Nuggo, Vincent Anderson playing, uh, Res 474, Dylan Poles, uh, Boba Flex 7, Bobby Weber, uh, Style, Matt Hoover, and Rico Rodriguez, Double Zero, uh, Ying Zeng Wang. Uh, they'll be playing for tonight uh, against Baylor. Uh, this will be a best of three. Uh, we already have the maps uh, figured out ahead of time. So we will have uh, start from game one, Border with Marietta defending, and Baylor will be attacking. Uh, followed by Bank, Marietta will be attacking, and Baylor will be defending. And then if we get to a game three, we will have Clubhouse with Marietta defending, and Baylor will be attacking. Uh, as far as other announcements go, I want to try to get to this really quickly, so that way we can get things set up for uh, our Rainbow Six game. Uh, last night, our, collegiate, our PUBG team participate in the last regular season match for Collegiate PUBG, and they have advanced to the finals, so congratulations to them. I think they were placed like 6th or 7th or somewhere around there, so uh, a really great job by the team. So they with the finals, that is a series of games that will start this Sunday at 9 o'clock in the evening Eastern Time, so you can go check that out uh, on twitch.tv slash Collegiate PUBG. We do not broadcast the, the PUBG matches, but we do try to host them. So you can always watch them here, but it will be on Collegiate PUBG. Uh, also, we've been trying to get the word out that uh, our Discord is available to the public. Let me get the, uh, that's the wrong button here. Uh, we do have our Discord available for anyone who wants to use it. Uh, so if you want to join our Discord to play games with, the, with other players, with teammates, uh, you can go to bit.ly slash piodiscord. Uh, if you don't have a Discord account, you will have to create it first, but it's completely free. And then you're welcome to check it out. Say hi to the team as they play games throughout the day or the weekends or the evenings. Uh, you're welcome to hop in. I mean, during this time of uncertainty, we want to try to maintain that sense of community, that sense of unity. And a great way to do that is being able to be in constant contact with each other. And why not do that by playing video games, huh? All right, so let me get onto the Collegiate R6 Discord. I'll go ahead and put the, uh, I'll go ahead and leave the Discord uh, thing up here real quick. And I'm gonna hop in as we try to get the, uh, the game set up here. So give me one minute here to join the Discord. Hello. Ah, hello. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. How about you? I'm doing okay. Just a heads up, I've already started up our broadcast, so everything you say is being recorded. Everything I'm saying is being recorded. All right, that sounds good. I okay. will ensure I keep up my professionalism. Uh, I'll, I'll try to, but I'm going to fail miserably. <laughs> All, All right. right. All uh, right. I'm going to put that at 80. Well, thank you for, for offering this. I think this is going to be really fun. Oh yeah, this is going to be exciting stuff. Excited! <laughs> I'm very excited to try this. I've never really do a stream before, so I haven't cool. either. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and make sure I for, don't forget to do the live stream thing as I'm getting this set up here. So, let's see if I can press this. Okay, so can you see my screen? And I think my Discord. Mm. There we go. Can you can you see my screen? Join stream. I can't see anything because I don't think you selected a screen to look at. Um, I thought I did. So, let's see. I, mean, I can't join. Yeah, I can't join your stream. Okay. All right, let's figure that. Okay. I might have a trouble trying to. Oh, wait, hold on. I see your stream popping up something. Okay. But I still can't click on your. 
Okay, maybe give it a second. I'm starting to wonder if maybe trying to broadcast while doing the Discord live might be an issue. Hmm. Let me see. That's weird. I can't, yeah, I can't. The other dual stream is doing the exact same thing. One guy is streaming it live, the other guy's joining it, to my understanding. Right. That's what it's, I'm seeing in their Discord. Yeah, they're probably doing it. Maybe my machine does not have enough oomph when I thought maybe it did. Let me check the mm. settings here. Maybe maybe if I lower the, the quality just a little bit, so it might not be as great for you. Tell me if that's any better. Uh, watch stream. Oh. Oh wait! Oh no! Wrong button. That yeah. was your Twitch stream. Which, no, no don't yeah, my, my tw the Twitch stream is on a three minute delay, so you're not. Yeah, good. we definitely don't want that. Yeah, I don't. Think I, can't, I still can't join it. That's I disabled. That's I disabled weird. the thing. Oh, too. That, that is weird. I disabled streamer mode. Okay, weird, weird, weird. Hold on, let me see. Oh wait, wait, wait! Um, I need to disable streamer mode. Let me try that. Okay. Okay. Try it now. Okay. Let's see. Nope, still not working. Still not working. Double uh, pro tip: double click user to watch. Oh, I got idea. Let double, me, okay, no. Nope. Let me try inviting you. Maybe that might work. It's weird. I can't even invite you to the stream. Maybe because you're already on the channel. No, I should be able to watch you even though we're in the same channel. Yeah, like I'm doing the invite to stream here. Uh, how? to duo stream on Twitch. Well, I mean, you should be able to... Well, you might have to do... It might be better... I guess the question is, so first of all, can, can you join my live thing on this channel, or does it not let you do that at all? I can't, I can't join your live thing at all. Huh, that is, that is weird. Okay. Um... Maybe you should try. Try and see if you can go live, and if I can view it, then maybe you should host the game, and then I, because I have my OBS set up where I can view something through Discord. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna let me close out of my OBS and see if I can join you. If I close out of OBS, let me try this. Okay. Uh, no, I just what the heck? Okay, Discord's just straight up broken. I straight up cannot join you. <laughs> that is weird. Those who are watching okay. Twitch, just hang on. We're we're working some technical difficulties, but we will get this. Uh, once we're figured out, I really need to re experience some technical difficulties image at this point. Uh, all right, let me try going live. Let me see what happens. Okay. So, screen one. I'm yeah. just going to go stream one on go live. Okay, so let me close all mine right. and let me see if I can look at yours. There. Okay, it, I just want to join. Can you see my screen now? No. I click on this is weird. I click on join stream, but nothing's happening. Happening, right? Yeah, I'm having the same issue. I wonder, could it be something with with the Collegiate R6 Discord? Is it possible that maybe it's? I know that they, in the the other channel, like it is set up where they should be able to, but I'm seeing the other streams are not having any issue doing it. From what I can see, hold on. That's just weird. Mm. I don't know if I should just randomly jump into one of those streams. No, probably uh, not. Might not be a good idea. Okay, let me try closing my game real quick. Hmm. Let me just check that. Um, okay, can I just join without being in the game? No. That is, this is so weird with, with Discord. Yeah. What the heck? Okay. Hold on. You go live again. Reload your stuff and go live again. Uh, okay, I gotta start my game again, uh, real quick. All right. I'm not even running. Yeah, I've oh. never seen this problem before. This is so odd. And the teams are probably wondering what's what's the hold up? Why are we not starting? Yeah. yeah. Um. Hmm. This is weird. All right. I'm just going to send a quick message to my team let them know that we're just taking a minute to get the uh, stream set up. Okay. Okay. All 
All right, we will get this figured out one way or another. As soon as Rainbow Six gets back up on here. Just so that not everyone is having to wait for. Okay. Just wanted to connect to this server. I'm just going to go ahead and put up my game overlay just so people can see that we're trying to get things set up here. All right. Okay, so now let me try going live. Rainbow Six, streaming channel, do all the S1. Go live. Okay, so I'm going to. Okay, no, I. I'm not getting anything. So it's you're clicking join. It's not doing anything. Yeah, it's not. Nothing's happening. Yeah, that's the same thing that's been happening with me. When I tried to join yours, it just wasn't doing things. Yo, oh, this ain't thing. looking too hot. No. Oh, shit. I mean, we. I mean, I know we're supposed to be in the the observer channel, but since we're both different teams, maybe we just need to try a bit a private Discord call. Maybe that might work. Mm, I I don't know because then I don't want to like get in trouble. No, I, I don't either. Risk yeah. that would win by either team. That's true. Uh, Let's see. I mean, I guess if this doesn't work out, I don't mind just like not casting this week. Like that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, Normally, I don't cast for this team anyways. So. Oh, I hate to have that happen. There's got to be something yeah. going on here. Cannot join stream. Let me see if I can just. I'm gonna try randomly joining someone else's stream. Okay. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to join their channel to watch it. Oops. It made me join their channel. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I think it does because you have to be in the other channel to uh, uh, to do it. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I'm letting them know. Yeah, I'm letting them, the other team know that uh, we're having some technical issues, but. I'll go ahead and at least get the lobby set up while we are waiting for that. Sure. Yeah, let me go ahead and start inviting people. <clears throat> okay, so at least we can get the lobby set up while we're trying to figure out what's going on here. Apologize, everyone. We, we're trying to find a way so that we can do the dual uh, commentary, but for some reason, Discord Live is not cooperating with us right now. Wait, hold on. It says... Uh, rules who can ignore room limits can join... Hold on. Okay, move to the... One of the try OBS or the quad... Move to the quad OBS. Quad, quad OBS? All right, yeah. let's, let's do it. Okay. Okay, go back live. All right. From what I'm reading, it says if there's a li slot limit. Okay, there we go. Oh, that, okay, that's all it was? It was just that the... Yeah, it was, there it was, was a taking, slot limit. Oh, it was taking up a slot. Yeah, it takes up a slot if I join you for some reason. I don't know what the logic there is, but yeah, you need extra slots for someone. Okay, so we need to just be in one of the upper ones. Uh, could, do you mind... What is the what is the frame rate that or the frame? The oh, let me adjust it right? again because I thought it was the uh, I, frame rates at thirty. Let me up the stream quality to seven twenty. I can't do any higher than that. Yeah, that's fine. Just okay, run at seven twenty. Is that better? Yeah, that's that's perfectly. Yeah, okay. that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I changed it earlier because I thought that maybe that was the problem. But all right, we are in business. Um, yes, sir. Okay, so now I'm just okay. getting everyone into the lobby here. So let me. Another invite to the Joey. No, yeah, I'll sure. DM him. Let him know that we got everything fixed. Right. Uh. Okay. It doesn't. Okay. My mic doesn't have any filters on it, which is kind of a problem. But I think I can work with it. That's not a big deal. Okay. <sighs> just, just watch your breathing. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> it is picking up a little bit of background sound. So let me just add a noise gate very okay. quickly. That's fine. We have plenty of time. 
filters, add noise suppression, noise gates, done. All right, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Appreciate, appreciate everyone's patience as we are getting things set up here. We should be able to get the game underway very soon. Hello, hello. Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, yeah. I just need to make sure the noise gate is picking up my voice and not the wind. Ah, uh, okay. All right, cool. There we go. That should work just fine. All right. Also, before I forget, I better get the game audio going because I had that muted earlier. There we go. All righty. Yeah, so I think we're just waiting for one more for Baylor to get in. And let me make sure. Okay, so Marietta is defending. So I want to make sure that Orange is defending. Blue is attacking. Okay, that setting is good. More time. Custom team names. I don't think I've tried this before. Custom team names. So let's do this. So, where is blue? I'm just Marietta. I'm learning new things every day. All right. I like it. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to go live on my end. Go for uh, it. So, Baylor versus... Is it Marietta University? College, yeah, we're Marietta College. Marietta College. Yes. Okay. You? All right. Once again, those who are watching, thank you. Appreciate everyone's patience as we're just trying to get this set up. We've, we've never, I've never tried the dual casting. And we just, apparently, the whole issue was just that we were in a. Uh, a Discord channel where the only two people are allowed in there, and you need a third slot for the, the, the live stream. Doesn't make any sense, but hey, that's how it is. All right, let me know right. when you're good. Let me make sure uh, all my my specifically my delay is on because I also need a three minute delay. Right. Uh, delay. Yeah, so it's almost 100, 180 seconds. Uh, it's a three minute delay. That's what I have mine set to. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, mine's good. All right, so I'm going to go and just check with the teams to make sure they're good. If I can type, that'd be great. All right, so I know we're good, so just get the ready checks for the, the two teams. All right, yep, ready to go. Hello, this is Dodo coming to you live from Texas and streaming for Baylor University. And this is, uh, my name is Matt Williamson. You can call me Drogar, uh, commentating on Marietta's side of things. We're doing a, a co-commentary broadcast, so this is going to be fun, exciting. I have no idea what's going to happen. Already we've had unpredictable stuff going on, so it's going to be mass hysteria, dogs and cats living together, but we're going to have some fun on the Friday night. Both sides have said they're ready, so let's get this underway. Let's see here. Just let me make sure. I'm just gonna do one last check to be. Yeah, yeah I already had the, the map set ahead of time, so let's go ahead and start this up. All, All right. right. Full disclosure: you're gonna know about this game way more than I do. <laughs> I got to level right. five just enough to be able to actually spectate uh, and broadcast. All right. Well, it looks like tonight our first map will be border with Baylor is going on their first attack. Marietta will be taking the defensive. So let's see what Marietta says for their attacker ban, and they're going to be going with the Thatcher. I've seen that quite common in border. For sure. I mean, that Thatcher ban is key to prevent the armory destruction. For uh, the push on armory, a common push would be once taking control of security, you push right onto point with destroying the armory wall, and your team will have full control and push right on into site with a very safe plant. So, definitely banning that Thatcher is important. Oh no, it looks like my thing went south. All right. Why did everything go south? So, and, Bay and Baylor's going to go with the, the Monty ban. Just another one of those where Monty can get a lot of vision, just can kind of get there in front to be able to call where everything is, and they're just saying they don't want to mess with that. Okay, uh, okay. so looks like we're going to need to do a rehost. Apparently, uh, one player has crashed. Oh, goodness. Oh. That is definitely not good. That's well, all mean, right. It, it's all good because it just started. Nothing wrong with that.
I mean, at least it's not like in the middle of the uh, of the game. For sure. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. We'll try this again. Uh, return to menu. Main match. Oh, that's too late. All right, that's it. We'll yeah. just we'll just have to rehost. I mean, there's nothing we can do there. That's all right. We'll try it again. Okay, just make sure. So I'll check all the settings here. It should be set to central. Okay, great spectator. All right, let's try this again. For everyone in the Baylor stream, sorry we're having more technical difficulties, but we've been plagued with it so far at this point so you know nothing new <laughs> at the moment yeah it happens let's see here just double checking all right yeah so i just need to get all the try the re-invites uh Ah, let's go and get the match options set up while we're waiting. It's gonna be appreciate everyone's patience as we're trying to get things uh, set up here. We'll get to game one soon enough. Just get everyone back in here. So as soon as we do, we will get this game underway. I think we're just waiting for, for one more from Baylor, it looks like. Since we get that last invite, we'll get this uh, going. <laughs> there we go. And we'll just do it. Okay. So now we're going to start it up. Actually, hopefully. Hey, just got to double check. Hey, just going to double check that Marriott is ready because I don't think they said they're ready. Baylor's ready. Go ahead and make sure. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Is everyone is ready? Yep. Take two. Awesome. Take two. <laughs> No crashes today. Please. Let's let's hope not. Actually, I need to swap my overlay because I have everyone on the wrong side. All right. Once again, we are back on border. Baylor on the attack, the defense. Uh, the first option for the ban that came out. Yeah, we'll just see the same first two bans. So Thatcher should be banned, and then Monty should be banned by Baylor. Monty ban. And yeah, we're just kind of repeating the whole process, or at least the first two. All right, let's just see who Baylor will select for their defensive ban. Yeah, 
and it looks like Baylor will be choosing Echo as their next band. I can't say I'm surprised. Echo is just, it seems like every time I watch a Rainbow Six match, Echo, like Echo and Mirror are like your top two defensive bands. Oh, for sure. I mean, Echo provides so much intel and utility. Okay. Yeah, All right. I, okay. Marietta's got the Taid band, which I feel like hurts them more than it hurts Baylor, since they're going to be playing defense first. A Kaid would definitely be more useful on the armory wall. Uh, although a bandit is equally good, but I mean, I guess if no one really plays the Kaid, then I can see why they would ban it. But that's just it. I know Nago has played Kaid a decent amount. I'm not saying like this is main, but I find that an interesting pick instead of like the Mira, but maybe they want to go with the Mira? I'm mean, checking here. They haven't, they're not doing the Mira at all. No, they are not. So, yeah, big surprise. Well, we'll see if that plays a, a factor here. I mean, they, they got the bandit so they could still uh, electrify fortified walls. But... It looks like services will be using a six pick to switch off the Zofia onto the IQ. They're definitely going to need it. They see Boba on the bandit with the IQ. They're going to be able to take out those bandit tricks through the floor, which will definitely help them secure the armory wall much faster. Yeah, and without the Thatcher uh, EMP grenade, they're going to have to use that to be able to try to see if they can penetrate Attackers the, the need to locate Thatcher. And defuse bomb. Okay. And the prep phase is underway with pretty pretty default movements here i'm seeing a lot of normal placements for the reinforcements which is which is good they're not going to be playing off the meta not introducing anything crazy no rush plays or anything like that which is always great to see yeah you know, that's what makes it a competitive game, competitive game i would expect a very standard setup nothing out of the ordinary keep an eye out for drugs to see if they can take out it's like joy just has got one set up over here where he's not going to catch her All right, we are underway. All right, so. All right, three will be spawning from the double doors. Chromius will be taking out the break room win or break room door, trying to see if he can get anyone crossing in 90. Not gonna find anyone at all. No one's really roaming around the area. He does get the ping that someone is near East Stairs but he's not going to play off it just yet because he knows it's relatively safe for the time being. Spectre will repel in. They're going to need to secure, secure they're going to need to take control of security. One is currently playing inside of security. Some shots are being fired off by services here, but I believe it is to open a door. A couple of shots go into security. And Styles and already knocked down. Here he goes. And there we go. Spectre with the finish. A very solid and quick clear against Marietta. I'm spotted. Reloading! Cover me! Services is going to be playing on East Balcony, trying to use his IQ to watch for anyone on the other side of that wall, possibly on their cams. He could take definitely take him out through the wall. Someone is going to be pushing up East stairs, but he doesn't know it yet. He might get run out on. And he does. Shot through the door. Attackers so great job there by Noga. Bulbflex gets Joey's down. Yeah. Yet another frag. Speaking of Boba, let's see what is he, if he catches anyone else. He's going to be running around. Trying to peek through. But... Frag grenade goes off. Not going to find anybody. As two people are going to be playing right outside of Armory. Three before situation. Another grenade goes off, takes out the deployable shield, making it a little harder for Marietta to try to get a trade. You see, Spectre has taken some damage already, but he's going to be trying to see if we can pinpoint where Marietta's oh, located. located. And 
and it looks like Spectre will be throwing out his fire arrows and his smokes to deny the push. That way, they can get the plant off safely. That being a relative statement, a Nitro goes off and does find Spectre, but Large frags his own teammate, bringing it down to a 2v3, and Chromius brings it down to a 2v2. Now, there was able to take down. Left, going down for the plant, not a lot of time. He does get it off successfully, but is he going to be able to finish off this 1v2? One, they are going to pinch him very hard. One's going to be pushing from security. Chris sees him. Yeah. Yeah, no good spots him, but he is extremely low in health, so he's had to back out. Rez looks like maybe trying to look for an opportunity to, to work on disabling the, uh, the bomb. This is going to be and really close here. Chromius finishes it off with two frags and a 1v2 clutch. Woo! Oh, Very man. close Very around cool. there. For sure. Very well done. So the first point going to uh, Baylor with their first win of tonight. So let's see if there's any adjustments to remain the composition. Uh, look where it, is. Yeah, it looks like there's quite a few adjustments. We're already seeing the Vigil, the Nystra, and the Dock. So they might be thinking that maybe they... There were several times where people were low on health, so if that little extra heal from Doc may give Marietta the, the edge that they need. We may still see that six pick, so let's see if there are any last second changes. And there are not, so here is your composition for round two. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Looks like Mary's going to go with the same site, same fortification. I don't think there's going to be anything out of the ordinary. I have to say, I, I mentioned this last week when we, when we broadcast, but I'm really liking this new spectator UI. Oh yeah, the, the, when they brought in the sidebars that tell you the gadgets and everything. Oh my goodness, game changing. It's so oh, yeah. nice. Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. All right, so. All right, looks like the push is gonna slightly change with two pushing from Valley this time around. Joey Joster and Chromius. Going to be playing on um, white balcony at the moment. It looks like Michael Cheese has the uh, fuser and is going to be moving around to the side. I do not know my map calls, so. And Rez is go off Spectre. Finding Rez. We have one currently playing in Armory. So let's see if they're going to be able to find that kill or what looks to be the bandit most likely playing in Armory is going to be able to take them out instead. Just the Claymore down just so that way he doesn't worry about being flanked from behind. Yeah, like Nuggles already went down during that uh, services was able to get that kill. Bandit still playing inside the armory. IQ is going to take out both the bandits from the bottom floor. Style gets a frag on a Chromius, bringing it down to a 4v3. And it looks like... <laughs> Joy Joster is gonna go for the flank, takes out both Boba and Style, left to a 1v4 situation as Rico is trapped on half wall. Rico does find a frag, but Mike is gonna refrag onto him, taking him out. It's just hard to come back when you're down, two. but it's just hard to come back when you're down four to one.
Yeah, a very well played round by Baylor. Uh, just find the, the kills that they needed. And Style immediately goes for the rook. Going, well, maybe that dog didn't work out as well as he thought. Yeah, he's definitely going to be playing an operator with a little more utility. Uh, it didn't seem like he got any docks off both on himself or on any of his buddies. So I think the Rook will definitely be a much better play. And it looks like Baylor is going to be sticking with the same lineup here. You were saying? Well, no, not exactly. It looks <laughs> like Spectre will be switching off a Capital onto a Fuse. A questionable pick given that they are currently going back to Armory. Uh, not much Fuse can really do on this site, given that most of it's all most of it is reinforced, making it very difficult for him to find anything. He might Defenders be able to get the fuse off, off into Sandwich, by attackers. but not really anyone is going to be hold. Excuse me, in between those lockers. So not. Yeah, not much you can do there. Excuse me for a little bit of lag. Uh, my Wi-Fi for some reason today has been giving me a couple of issues, but that's something out of my control. It's been relatively consistent, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue. But if it is, we will deal with it accord uh, accordingly. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds to insertion. Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. We are underway. So let's see. It seems like Chroma Services and Joe Josta will be opening all those services is gonna take the initiative. At least I thought it was. Bob Boba gets droned out no, I'm I apologize. Boba is currently playing in in customs, sorry. So he's not going to be thrown out. I thought he was playing in security. It doesn't look like it. He's going to be playing below. Very questionable, in my opinion, given that Boba is the band. What are we looking at? I, I thought it was a drone, but for some reason it was weird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the fuse does go off. He's not going to find anybody, of course, with all that noise it makes as Rico rotates out of sandwich. However, it does at least flush him out a little bit, but it's not like they can really capitalize on that flush. Well, Nogo's going to be trying to see if he can detect anyone. Nothing's going to connect. Some serious drywall work coming up. Still minimal to no knowledge on the location of Baylor. The pulse pulling below is definitely not going to find anyone. No one's really near him, above him, just anywhere around him. They're not going to find anything. Now he must have thought that they were going to go in one direction and some completely different. Mike takes a ton of damage, but he does take down Rico. Very well done. Clearing out half wall, which is always good. And two roamers below off site. Always a bad thing once they get that push off. Looks like one is going to be playing on East stairs. No one's going to see him yet as he rotates back down. Looks to be the pulse. They're not going to be able to find anything. Fuse is going to be setting off another charge. A nitro cell goes off. It's not going to find anybody, though. One currently playing right inside Africa. As he's going to push it out. Mike isn't going to find him, but Rez is taken out by Chromius as well as Style. Joey gets a frag on a large, bringing it to a 5v1 situation. It's well, it's round. Boba with only 25% left and is taken out by services with a nice headshot from IQ. Yeah, I think the thing there for Marietta was Nogo was. I think he predicted where Baylor was going to go, and his prediction was wrong, and he was not able to find anyone, and that gave Baylor the opportunity to come in undetected and just basically pounce uh, on the the pioneers. So I don't question the uh, the pulse pick at all. It was just wrong place, wrong time. 
Exactly. Yeah, I agree. His placement at the time, he wasn't going to get any intel. He wasn't going to find anybody. No one was pushing him on East there. So really, he had no merit or reason being there at the moment. But I mean, the pulse pick is definitely a very decent pick. Rico is going to be on the Tachanka and it doesn't look like they're going to six pick off of him either. No, I stand corrected. He is going to be six picked off of onto the smoke. Sad, sad hours. We don't get to see the Tachanka play. You're a Tachanka fan? Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. All right, excuse some of the quality here. Uh, it looks like the stream's quality dipped for a second, but it's resetting. It's all good now. Apologize. If my stream starts uh, acting up, I always try to reset the, the Discord stream if that helps. It's all good. Uh, as long as we're not lagging or anything, it's no big issue. There shouldn't be a large discrepancy between our voices. Okay. It's always a big deal. I remember this one time I was trying to go commentate a CSGO match and we were watching on, uh, oh, what was the the, the client they were using? I can't remember what it was called. But, like, we were watching the same match, but apparently, like, everything was off by, like, 30 seconds when we were both watching the same game, so it was really hard to commentate it. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we, I personally haven't experienced anything like that, but I've seen, seen it happen before. We had somebody experience that issue when it was my own college. So if, for those who don't know, I don't actually go to Baylor. I attend a different university and at my university, they had a lot, they, they were, they were having an issue with the large gap between both the, uh, common, both the casters at the time, but it happens. All right. Anyway, this match underway. Fuse is going to fire off and sandwich. Definitely not going to find anybody. A lot of noise being made and they're going to rotate out. No damage taken either by the side of Marietta. Well, a large Nago. Except for Nago. But he's going to catch on right now. And he takes it on East stairs, whipping out the pulse scanner as soon as he gets peaked. Unfortunate. Chromius gets a frag on a res pushing from East stairs. Looking to be very quick as they already eliminate two people. And that's going to give him the green light to push, although there's a trade between Sturf Style, Boba, and Joester all at the same time. Drones up and running. Guns are definitely going live. This could go either way. Services get the frag on a style. It does look like the drones are completely broken for the spectators, and Services finishes it off with a frag on Rico. I feel bad for Nugo at that time. Like, the pulse actually worked, but it was just too... Too close, they didn't have time to react, so he was basically taken down by the time he was uh, whipping out the weapon. It was unfortunate. Yeah, whipping it out really in such an a close encounter gunfight, not maybe the smartest decision, but definitely could have been very useful intel for him, knowing that Chromius was going to push, but Chromius being a little more aggressive took the first step and pushed right onto East Airs, eliminating the pulse. Yeah, to be fair, I don't think he anticipated them to be right there when he uh, brought out the the tracker. Exactly. But now we're seeing, so Mario's going back with the dog, and this time Rico's going to be playing it. This is an interesting choice. For sure. I always have to call out because, like, it's, it seems like every time we have practice, they always, like, debate about Doc versus Rook. They were debating about it, like, just before today's match. And I was like, I was telling them, look, guys, let, let, let's sell the debate after the match. Attackers have discovered the location of a bomb. That's, yeah, the, for I, I agree with that there is, like, the utility between Doc and Rook are practically the same. It's really just in whose hands are they put into. For most people, Rook would be the better option, just given that his utility is pre-game and that he can do so much without actually having to be alive. But with Doc, he does have to be alive. He is gonna have to play around his friends, or if he's gonna roam, he's actually gonna have to get frags. And that way, if he gets down or just gets damaged, he can pick himself back up. He doesn't have to rely on other people. Yeah, that's the thing I do like about Rook. I mean, you get your armor down, you've done your job. 
So now it's just a matter exactly. of who contribute, where it was with Doc. If you go down early, you haven't done your job, it's just kind of a waste. Yep, two pushing from Valley once again, but the sights change to ventilation. Let's see if the strategy Reloading. with the s same lineup with the strategy is going to work out the same way, or will it turn in Marietta's favor? Boba is going to take a couple shots here. A couple shots from the outside by Chromius, too. And it looks like Boba is going to be pushed in armory. Both by the IQ and Capital Res coming up for some reinforcement. Help cover just in case something goes wrong. It's going to be watching East Hall from 90. Chromius is going to take some shots. Boba gets a frag onto Tupau. Or onto Spectre. I will refer to him Spectre. Excuse me. He's not going to find the Joey Joster as Nomad sitting outside waiting for him. And we get one for one trade between Nugo, Chromius Services, and Res. So Res will fall and so will Chromius. So now we're back to a 3v3. Let's see what Style is up to. Looks like the remaining three will be playing site, and that means the three players upstairs are going to have to push down into server room if they are going to have any getting the plant down. The thermite will go off on main lobby wall. He's going to fire a couple into the door to help distract. The thermite's going to be activated successfully. Opening up main lobby. A very long line of sight that can be used here. Joey is going to get a frag onto Styles from above. A couple more shots are going to be taken here. No one's going to really find anyone. IQ is looking to push in very soon. Nuggo is going to be using his smokes now to help delay some of the push. A trade goes off. Mike on Rico. Nuggo on services. But Baylor finishes it off with Mike finishing off Nuggo on site. Hmm. So I personally think that Marietta did a much better job of holding that compared to Armory. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's just the... But I didn't see any like blatant errors. I think it's just well executed by Baylor. For sure. Yeah, they, they cleared out what they needed to. Marietta was able to get a lot of frags upstairs, but really both sides traded it out eventually, bring it to a 3v3. So there's not really much that was gained or lost really in any of those confrontations. Yeah. They still had access to all the utility they needed. And I think so. it was just a really good double kill by uh, Joy Joster there that uh, Put it in their favor but we are at round six so marion needs to try to see if they can get something on the board because after this uh rolls will be swapping and with the advantage that baylor already has it's not going to take much for them to be able to take this game especially being on defense so when we did the map picks and bands um, marietta did spot. choose defense first so let's see if they can get something on the board before the rolls swap Baylor is holding a 5-0 lead. This is looking to be a pretty quick map for Baylor if it def ends up going in their favor. But <laughs> who's to say that Marietta couldn't do a complete 180 and turn in, oh, everyone turn into Bolo and just destroy the entire <laughs> Baylor team. So I I've seen maps where like they've been behind and then they start getting a, a mo their momentum going and start taking some games. But the th the only thing I would say with that though is he barely only needs two games, two rounds to win, to win the whole thing at this point. So even if Marius starts putting together a streak, all Baylor needs is like one really good play and they're going to be right back in it. So I, I say that like thinking that they might fall behind, but right now with the 5-0 lead, it's just not going to take much for them to stay there. Uh, so we see Chromius kind of moving from mind going straight to the uh, bomb site. Trying to see if he can catch anyone early. 
not they do I... open all right so they do open a very unique hole to watch onto the ventilation window but it's not really going to do much actually it might harm them a little more if they try to rotate as the smoke is currently stuck on servers if he tries to rotate out he might just get shot by, by chromiums well, see, rotate off. does go out yeah he does take out uh boba there they have full control of armory now so they're gonna they're gonna have to play vertically opening up everything that is necessary that way they can clear the bottom floor, letting Chris Promius push in. One is going to be pushing from east there. They don't have the call that he's there. It looks like they're just taking some random shots with no calls. Rico is going to find a frag on a Joey, but Services is going to refrag on a Rez. Three v four right now. It's not looking too hot for Marietta. Spectre is going to find a frag on a Rico. Oh, it's left his Nuggo in style, so they're going to have to hold this with four members of Baylor still up. And Styles going to fall. Gonna able, definitely not going to be able to find it. Nuggo does, however, get a frag on his services. Bring it to a 1v3. It's under a minute now. This is a pretty winnable situation. Nuggo takes out Chromius, has control of the Fuser too. But he doesn't know that. He's going to have to rotate all the way around. No, he doesn't have a confuser. A plant will be going down. The services is going to find the frag. Or large Nuggo is going to find the frag. Apologies. Got the wrong call. He's going to clutch it out with a final kill. Spectre getting Marietta their first win for tonight. That's the thing with Nuggo. When, you have, when the game is on the line, he is not afraid to put it on his shoulders. And I think he basically, he pretty much won these three the, the entire team. So very impressive gameplay there uh, by Nuggo. We'll see if that, mean, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, very well done. Nuggo's positioning was absolutely stellar, constantly rotating, staying on the move, finding those frags. How, there was a little questionable movement when he was pushing on the plant. However, I mean, he got the frag very quickly, which definitely gave him a lot of window to work with. And I mean, what did I say? Marietta turned it around. Someone became Bolo and finished off the round and got the win. So, <laughs> so let's see if they can keep that momentum going into round seven. The uh, the roles have swapped now, so Baylor will be defending and Marietta will be attacking. And we see Baylor's going to be using their six pick to bring out the bandits. Don't see any major surprises with cops on either side. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Bomb located by attackers. Looks like pretty standard. And yeah, we'll try to see if they can get the vision. Nuggo, I mean, got yeah, Nuggo's drone does get taken out. Five seconds left. Looks like Joey might be going for an aggressive spawn peak to start. Let's find out. Looking at east side, he has a pretty nice angle there. He's not gonna, he's not gonna find anybody though. No one spawned that side, so. It's not yeah. like he's going to be finding anyone yeah. pushing from the east side here. Three spawned valley. Actually, I stand corrected. All five had spawned valley and all pushing from the south side. They're going to get try to get control of armory wall just like Baylor did before. Let's see if they're going to be equally successful. Nuggo is going to find Chromius, but gets oh, refragged by services yeah, service played very aggressive went outside was detected was able to take out both rico and nuggo
I think services did catch someone there, but I'm just waiting. Meanwhile, Tal Palapal took out Style, but he's going to go down himself. So it is a 3v2, Boba getting the kill on there. Suck. Boba taking some damage, he's going to have to be very cautious. Already taking more hits, there's only less than a quarter left to go. It's a 3v2 situation with Boba and Rez being the last two alive, and I mean, this is not looking too good. Still a lot of time to work with. They do have Diffuser, so that's all good too. Yeah, but they're, they're struggling just to get in, and there's still a minute to go. So if they take too long, then they're going to have to to rush with the bomb site. And Unfortunately, you know Zafia is going to be taken out in 90 by Joey as they do get the call from the camera. As Thermite zips in, he's gonna be taken out at half fall by Kale, or Mike, apologies. I, I know a couple of these guys by alternate names, so forgive me. It's all good. So we are at match point. Uh, if Baylor takes this round, they will take map one. So we'll see what Maria can try to do to hold this. They're gonna have, if they're gonna come back from this, it's gonna be one heck of a comeback. And we're already seeing some interesting choices by Marietta with the Jackal and the Gridlock. I'm not sure why they're selecting Jackal this time around. They didn't really find any heavy roamers that they were taken out by to really constitute a jackal selection gridlock on the other hand with zafia sledge and maverick will be solid choices for the upstairs push i guess i could see jackal holding it out as necessary because there will be roamers looking around in armory in offices in archives just because they baylor is going to need to have some level of upwards control initially Defenders just to prevent them from securing security because once they get their hands on security and armory they're going to be able to have vertical control onto the site attackers have located a bomb As the defense phase is moving up or the prep phase is going on, Joey is going to be banditing all of the Five east wall, which Attack not a bad choice. Can be seen that people will push from bathroom. Definitely that teller's wall. That's pretty important. That offers such an increasingly long, long way of vision for the attacking team if they can open that with any operator. So it's good that they shock it all off. And it looks like they're going to be going upstairs to secure first with Rez watching the rotation from parking lot. Bow goes down super early. This is not how Marion needs to start this round if they're going to try to come back. With that initial frag, a lot more pressure is going to be put on Marietta to try to get a refrag and even out the match. And, and looks like it happens. Yeah, but Nogo takes a lot of damage for that. He's just one-shotable at this point. So he's going to have to play very conservative if he's going to want to stick around here. They have the Maestro Cam on site to make the calls, but it's taken out by the Zafia grenade. And Spectre is just going to be sitting around waiting. Joe Joster does get the kill onto Nogo, so it is a 43. And Spectre knows that Marina wants to try to breach through there, so he's just waiting for someone to come through. But it looks like Marina will rotate around, I think. Looks like Legion's also going to be trapped in that corner. He doesn't really have any way to in or out. 
but they don't have the call that he's there either so they're not going to be able to really work much with that someone is going to be playing above the window and jack will try to speak it but it's taken out by joey jokestar it's down to a 2v4 it's one minute to go in the round and could be one minute left in the match Marion is going to have to make a move if they want to stay in this game. They're going to drone up the upper floors. They don't have a lot of time to work with. They're going to have to go for these frags very quickly. He's going to be pushed from 90 and he spots the bandit pushing him. I said, he's going to drop down in prone position. I said, I'm going to question the drone call just because of how much time he has left. There's only 30 seconds left. So he's going to have to find the other four. Rico's found one, but he's taking some damage and he has to back away. And during that, Rez goes down, so Rico's the only one's left for Marietta. 15 seconds to go. Rez's Claymore is going to find Chromius, though. 10 seconds remaining. Which is unfortunate. Chromius not paying attention enough. Only five, five seconds, seconds left. This is unfortunately going to go straight to Baylor. Not much you can do there. Rico <laughs> is going to get Operator one last frag to increase his KD but on Spectre. Just, but it's just not enough. Baylor will take uh, the first map, 7-1. to one. Very well done by Baylor. Solid execution on the sites that they were playing and their attacking phase was very well executed with almost no hiccups aside from the smoke that was Nuggo finishing off a 1v4 and clutching out his own round. Other than that, didn't really do much there. On the other hand, Marietta had a little bit of struggle and a little bit is definitely an understatement. They were struggling quite a bit not being able to frag upstairs and they couldn't clear the armory room which definitely let them left them with more difficulty to push onto the site in ventilation which lost them their second defense round their second offense round sorry go ahead and also uh change the names that you have to like oh yeah yeah, change again. yeah yeah thanks yeah you have to reset all the options yeah so got us the orange attacks but apparently yeah oh you change custom names on. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. custom names on there we i go. am such all a right. noob <laughs> all right getting ready for round two yeah i know mary said they were ready i didn't catch it baylor said they were ready did you catch it I did not. Who's attacking oh, I, I, this time? Uh, Marietta. No, Baylor says he okay, need a cool. second. Marietta's ready, but Baylor needs okay. a second. That's fine. All right, we will take a slight intermission here as we wait for the next round to get started. Going to go on the intermission screen here. Yep. As we wait it out. Just a quick bathroom break for everybody, which is always good. Mm hmm yeah, I mean, these games are pretty long. I mean, the first game, even though it took us a little bit to get it started, that was about a, it's about a 40 minute game there. So if you need to take a little breather, get up, walk around, use the restroom, good idea to do it before going to the next game. Because I mean, with Baylor up by one game, they just need to take uh, Bank, which is the next map. If they take that, then they win the, uh, the entire series. You want to make sure that you're ready to go. I don't want to say completely rested, but focused enough to get into this next game. Yeah, so while we're waiting for him to get ready, we'll be right back in just a minute. You're watching Married to Call G-Sports. Don't go away. All right, looks like Baylor's ready. Yep, that was a very quick intermission for us. Yep, so let me get uh, 
Everything. We confirmed that Marietta's ready. Marietta's yeah. ready too. Yeah, I'll double check one more time just to make sure since there was a second air. Yeah, I want to double check because if Baylor took a, took a step away, it's possible that Marietta took a step away and no one's responded yet. <laughs> They might have stepped away. <laughs> they might have. They might have just all stepped away. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. So where are we? Pre Durgar, oh, go ahead. Do you mind me asking what, how, I assume you play console before? Console Siege? Um, I am what you would call a filthy casual. Ah. Uh, especially <laughs> in a game like Siege. I play just enough, as you can see on my screen here, I play just enough to hit level 5 so I can actually spectate games. That's so, fair. So okay. you can guess my uh, experience uh, with this game. So, it, yeah, my well, game... I mean, no honestly, it, to me, from what you're you're, you've already been talking about, it seems like you at least know the game at... Uh, a little more than a basic knowledge, which is always good. So, I mean, just for being level five, that's outstanding. Well, I've been, I've been commentating enough and got enough uh, trash talk from Twitch chat from time to time to try to improve it a little bit. But <laughs> it's the life of a streamer, right? Okay, everyone says they're good, so I'm gonna tell them that we're gonna start up. So let's get this game going. So yeah, the second map will be Bank. Marietta will be attacking first. Baylor will be defending. So we'll see what kind of adjustments there'll be in the, the band phase. So Baylor will have the first offensive ban at 10 seconds to see what they will be taking out. We're still getting the Thatcher ban. I find this very interesting. Huh. <laughs> Hello. Everyone in the chat. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Once again, to everyone hopping in, this is the first time either one of us are duo casting, so it's something new, something we want to try out, make it a little fun for us. Yeah, and so far it's been fun. We've had some technical difficulties early on, but I think we got those kinks worked out. And I don't know about you, I'm having a great time. This this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, um, a couple of requests have been put in for, this is for my stream specifically, to put it at full screen, which I have, as you guys can see, adjusted. So you guys should be able to see that now. Um, I will try to fix it at, at, at the future in the future. It, the reason I had that before is because the quality will be dipped a little bit just because I am watching a 720p stream of this. So, and that's not something we can really address right now, so. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, but, I, I don't pay money for Discord Nitro. I apologize to all the <laughs> Baylor viewers. Oh hey, if, you know, if no you, one's if no you want the, get mad at you. If you want the full resolution, you can always shameless plug, you can always dual watch the stream on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Marriott College. Sorry, had to do that. It's alright. <laughs> Self promotion is welcome here. Yeah. Especially I mean yeah, you got your own school. I'm I'm supporting a different school. We're basically on opposite sides. I don't know how we're not fighting already. <laughs> well, we're trying to have fun here. I mean, we're not to get into what's going on in the, the outside world right now. We're in a very uncertain time, but here we can get together, have fun playing games, doing something we enjoy, just kind of get away with what's been going on. So I think being able to have esports continue has been a, a huge help. For, for everyone yeah 
I, I think esports is and and Twitch in general, honestly, Attackers platform that everyone can go to involved. when they're ultimately bored from their daily lives, being trapped at home mm -hmm. with the whole situation going on. Looks like the first site, of course, will be basement. As Baylor is going to go about their reinforcing ways, setting up and getting ready to go. Services is doing the reinforcements on the north wall of a site. Yeah, and while we were kind of chatting and having fun, uh, we did see Maverick, Mira, and Echo being banned. Very standard bans that we would expect uh, in a game like this. I mean, think we mentioned before, I mean, Mira and Echo are two very common defensive bans. Maverick is one of those, Mariana did, apparently saw something with Maverick they don't like. Uh, they don't want Maverick to be able to kind of get that egg with burning through the fortified walls and getting those uh, peak hole kills, so. Hey, it's not anyone. We, we don't want to play it. And Huggo goes yeah. down, and so Services gained two kills right from the word go. Attackers recovered the fuse. Services with that very quick rush onto Jewelry Front, taking out two already. Very, very well executed. That Maverick Band coming out, as, as my friend here noted earlier, the Maverick Band does come out they don't want them burning through the walls as well as for this site specifically you don't want them burning through those hatches like getting a maverick on those hatches is pretty bad once they're open one is going to be playing garage is going to find a couple shots onto the leg of specter as he rotates but he's not going to find him at all he just shot through the wall and got a little lucky got a couple shots off mm -hmm. Speaking of Spectre, let's see what he's up to. Is he still checking over by Tunnel? And actually, Rez is going to get the kill on Chromius. Bring it down to a 4v3. They do have a call that two people, or at least one person, is going to be playing inside the garage. So we're going to have one person watching on B site, holding an angle on the big doorway. Jackson, drop the bomb diffuser. As he does find style. Mike takes him out with the clean headshot. Services gets his third frag of the match on Boba, but he's going to be refragged by the Habana. But Mike finishes it off with a refrag on to Rez. Yeah, those two uh, frags early in the game really halted Marietta's progress there. So that Slowing was just, them down, yeah. I mean, it's just an insane play there by Services. Marietta is definitely going to have to watch those early runouts, make sure they don't lose too many guys at the beginning. And it puts a lot more pressure on them, which is going to cost them precious seconds in the initial start of the round, which you might not think costs too much given how much time that they have once they start. But those crucial rounds could cost them in the future because time is still ticking. And even just the numbers difference. I mean, when you're down five to three in the first 15 seconds, you have to be very more, more careful just because, well, I mean, it can be easily 2v1 or 3v1 at any point because of that number's disadvantage. We see Rico bringing out the IQ for the sixth pick instead of the Lion. We'll see if that plays a factor in this game, or this round, I should say. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Where are you? <laughs> There you are. Looks like they'll be playing in executive and CEO as their second site. A pretty good site. Honestly, my issue with this site is that banana is completely unsafe if they try to snipe onto site, which is a great way to control site if they can find those frags. So Castle will be expending two of his windows onto the banana windows there, covering up two of the ones that face the northwest and west side. Five seconds remaining. They're also going to be shotgunning above the reinforcements on the east side of CEO, which is important because that way they can throw their impact grenades onto the top half of the wall which could potentially destroy Thermites if Thermite places his gadget a little too high, which is crucial because once those Thermite walls get opened, it's going to make it much, much harder for Baylor to hold down the site. 
And we see, we would just keep it on the surface because he's already looking at maybe trying to catch up. Although, Nuggo gets the early kill onto Chromius. Looks like that frag will be found from Skylight there. Chromius unfortunately rotated out onto Square and it's gonna be taken out pretty quickly. Services is gonna be chilling right on the main doorway. Not gonna find anybody though. No one's really repelling on his side, taking far too long to try to peek out and look if anyone's there. Although he might be able to potentially find this frag right in front of him. As you can see, someone is currently holding above on the roof. If he repels down to that window, services will be able to get that frag because they still have no clue where he is. He's just hard roaming on the complete opposite side of the map. Now Spectre is going to be... Yeah. Nitro Cell will be going off. Not going to be able to buddy, though. Boba taking quite a few shots. Not going to find anything at all. Rick is trying to be looking for a device. He's going to catch something. Marietta still struggling to push in with a little over a minute left. They're having a lot of trouble securing, even though that they have the pressure advantage with the man advantage being a 5-4 to four situation, but that might change right about now. Nuggo is currently in a fight in Janitor. It's hit by a Legion, though. And an impact goes off. It's not going to find anything. To drop the bomb diffuser. Legion is going to be able to find Nuggo in Janitor and finishes him off. And that is the diffuser, too. Mike is going to be trapped, though as more people are going to be peeking into Janitor, try to pre-fire him and take him out. The problem is Marion only has about 30 seconds left, and there's Spectre only one of them left. Services, or I'm sorry, Spectre gets a frag on a rest. Services has got a frag go. Mike gets frag on a Styles, bringing it to a 1v4 situation with Boba being the last one alive. And he's taken out by the Jaeger. How's Go ahead. Clutches. Yeah, I was about to say, Marion was running out of time, and they start, They had to make a play, but Baylor got the jump on them, which they would take out three of them in just a matter of seconds. Yeah, Marriott was having a lot of trouble just going in. They, they just did not have the confidence to push in. Once they got that initial frag, they should have been banking off that confidence that there would be more pressure on the Baylor to try to get a refrag to even at even it back out and just like the psychological pressure that you are down one man and are now stuck in a 4v5 situation very early on in the match but they couldn't capitalize on it so they unfortunately yeah unfortunately cost them their round and it looks like baylor will be going into tellers and archive as their next site Joey Joster will be switching off the Vigil onto a Cav. Still hard roaming. Style will be switching off the Nomad onto a Fuse. The Fuse could be very good given the site. And the Cav will Attack also be a strong operation, operator pick they can. for Baylor. As they will kind of need a heavy roamer here. Helps secure site early. And it also is going to allow Joey to play a lot more of the location of a bomb. Boba's drone is going to safely make it out of the teller's room or archive's room. It's going to be in the office room next to open. Can't say the same thing about Styles, uh, drone. <laughs> Five seconds to insertion. It looks like Rest is going to get a drone right in the, the bomb site. Prep phase is over. A lion goes off immediately. Catching out. Anything. One lion already expended. He's going to be down to two lion rings now, which is still a lot, but that's still one down. You're still one down, which it might cost them in the future. I think that was intentional. We'll it might have been a misclick. It might have been a misclick. Okay. That, that, that's pretty fair if it was a misclick 
and it's a misclick that could cost him a lot of utility services is going to be firing not going to find anybody as he ran out of electrical trying to see if he can shoot anybody on jewelry no one there to be taken out yet cav is going to finish off res in stock as he rotates out to big door is he gonna run out be a little more aggressive here and push onto them he might just do that one is right, right around the corner he's gonna see one is he gonna find the second no he's not gonna find either of them and it's taken out on, on the top of square bit off a little more than he can chew trying to take out both nuggo and style I found one. Well, I think he saw the one. I'm not so sure he was aware that Nuggle was right around the corner. So as he saw him, he tried to switch to him, but by then it was too little too late. Exactly. A lot more roaming upstairs. One is going to be around the corner in. As Fuse is going to be going off an executive. It looks to me that it's Chromius roaming upstairs right now, chilling in Trump waiting for someone to push he does fire a couple of shots so that he know they know that he's near banana at the least a frag grenade goes off into trump he's not gonna find anything though not cooked a lion will go off chromius move stops moving just in the nick of time mike however is gonna find styles bringing it to a 3v4 situation here as mike is gonna be playing the top of square waiting to see if anyone rotates out he is gonna catch nuggo the balcony Married has 30 seconds left, and there's only two of them left, so it's going to be up to Boba and Rico to try to make a move, with four from Baylor still up. I, mean, I know you got to be cautious, but I mean, they're running out of time. They have to make a move now. Services is going to be playing inside of Electrical. Let's see if he gets a little aggressive, see if he can find some snags. Chromius is going to drop down. Get a frag onto Boba, but Rico gets a refrag on a Chromius. Only four seconds left. Not There's just nothing he can do. Operators, you have run out of time. Baylor wins round three. To no surprise, as they just wasted so much time, just not being able to push. That's the thing I have noticed with Marietta's offense, just from watching several of their matches. They have a tendency to take too long to make a push, so they're always down to like 30 seconds left. It's like, oh my goodness, we gotta make a play! And that's just when everything falls apart. So I think part of it is they take too long to uh, actually infiltrate. So maybe they're just afraid of the early kills, because that is something that has bitten them before. It's just either getting uh, falling to the early spawn peaks or just getting picked off as soon as they enter. But they have, a, a, they have struggled with trying to infiltrate faster. So they need to work on their entrance strategies. Yeah, I definitely agree. They have a lot of potential here to work with, but they're not being aggressive enough and nowhere near aggressive enough to even come close to just how well Baylor is playing out these rounds. And I mean, Baylor's not doing anything near perfect. Attackers need to they are still, there's still a lot of openings, can. a lot of windows that uh, Marriott, uh, Marietta could be capitalizing on, but they're not finding it because they're just playing so slow that Baylor is constantly moving around and gives them such, such a greater window of opportunity to move and get those frags on the defensive side and take them out very quickly. Looks like services will be playing inside server this time around. Seconds remaining. Is someone going to be playing blue stairs? It looks like there's a possible chance. I'm not entirely sure. Locate and defuse the bomb. Let's see what Mary does. I know they love to go through the sewer here. So in fact, let's just see if that's what they do. And it doesn't look like anyone spawned jewelry front. And they, uh, yeah, no one's on jewelry front. So. And Rico burned his line again, so I don't think that was in, that was intentional in the last round. Just using up those lines very early isn't going to do... Sure, you could probably catch a roamer very early on, but it's not like they're going to be standing right in front of the door waiting for you. 
most likely either they're going to run out and they're going to eventually be spotted within two seconds by the natural system of the game or you know they're just not going to be they're just going to be roaming around inside the map and in the first two seconds it is literally impossible for anyone to get inside the map that quickly services is going to find a frag on a boba from open area He's gonna be able to find another. He does see another. Takes out Rico as well, bringing it to a 5v3 very quickly. Two are gonna be pushing in electrical. He's gonna be firing. Nearly finding a frag, flicking onto a body as we saw. Very luckily, he's definitely not hacking. He's gonna push into electrical. He tries to get another frag and he does. Takes out Rez, bringing it to a 5v2. He's gonna have to reload though. Switching to a pistol, gets a fourth frag on his style. Nuggo is gonna be able to take out Chromius though. It's not the, uh, I'm sorry, Service is just having an insane game. Is he gonna get, well, he's knocking on death's door now, but he should get, re well, never mind. He's gonna try to be rezzed, but in an unfortunate position, though. Thermite's gonna try to go for Frag himself, and he does find it on Spectre. However, Joey Joester goes for the trade and takes him out. But still, Service is with an insane game. Uh, taking down four of Marietta. It's going back to what you were saying before. The fact that Marietta is taking so long to infiltrate, that's going to give services a chance to roam around the different en uh, entrances and catch people off, which is what he was able to do that round. I think Rico's trying to use his line to see if he can catch those early spawn peaks, but it's just not working. Marietta has to get in a lot faster to make it more difficult for services to find uh, those openings in the entrances. Yeah, and one thing I'd also like to point out is that it seems like Marietta is actually trying to challenge these peaks when I think it would do more for them if they just ignore the run out. If they move their position out of the way from where Jaeger can try to take shots at them, he's not going to be able to find them. He's going to have to rotate back inside. He's going to have to move somewhere else. And Marietta clearly can't challenge it. So why challenge it? Just let him go back inside and play the round out. We do see Rez bringing out the, the Dokubi this time. An interesting choice. We have not seen a Dokubi at all this match. So I wonder if we're going to try to use that once again to see if we can spot out anyone. But I don't know. I just find that interesting. Yeah, I can. I'm a little, I'm a little confused too as to why they would select a Dokubi outside of the, the only possibility in my head that. Dokubi is because they are getting run out on quite a bit. Getting an initial call would theoretically put pressure on a roamer that has to stop, answer his phone, and then go for a run out, giving Marietta a little more opportunity to work with. But most likely that's not going to happen because what's going to end up happening is the services is going to run out here on the main door, whether he gets rung or not. Or he's just going to be playing right on the main doorway there inside that little area and he's just it does, it's not going to matter enough like it's not going to do anything for marietta but it doesn't look like they actually end up using the ring here at the initial start of the phase which is good saving the utility for later yeah. which is important ever you see the line not being burned at the very beginning so i think they're realizing that spawn peak is not a uh priority of baylor right now so let's see if Mary can find a way in quickly. They're still they're already taking a good time, almost burning, already 45 seconds in the round, and they still haven't actually set inside yet. They need to definitely push in a little more. Thermite is going to definitely need a little bit more help here to clear out square and stock. No one's really coming up to reinforce him. He is going to be shot from the stock hallway as Chromius opens up a little hole in the wall, takes out Nuggo as he tries to break open the window. Drop the bomb diffuser. Everybody loading. Throwing crack. was able to get the res down, but res did have the diffuser. So that's going to be a big problem for Marietta because now they're either... Basically, Baylor can just defend that diffuser, so Marietta's only chance now is to try to take out the uh, the entire team, but being down 3-5, to five, not in their favor. No, Baylor's absolutely decimating Marietta at the moment. Finding a very quick frag, Joey Joester is going to take quite a bit of damage. Chromius is going to rotate in stock. 
find it. Rico outside grenade, playing the balcony. A frag grenade will go out into the hallway. Not gonna find anyone. The services is gonna find Styles bringing Boba, who is currently playing the South Stairs Skylight, and is taken out with a flawless round for Baylor by Joey Joster. So we are in round six. This is going to be the last round where everyone's going to be on their respective sides. Once again, Marion is going to have to try to get something on the board because otherwise, when the roles swap, Baylor just needs one win on the offense and they will take the series. Using Mary to bring out the fuse and gridlock this time, see if that makes a difference. Enjoy was thinking about switching, but decided to keep Frost instead. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. Bomb located by attackers. Ten seconds to insertion. Five seconds left. Services looks like he's gonna go for a run out here on the main doorway opening up to the doorways He's gonna be using the cam see if he can get any calls or find anybody But doesn't look like anyone's gonna be spawning on the north side at all Everyone's spawning alley access, so he's not gonna be able to find anybody Not a lot to can work with here. Rez is gonna drone out stock. He's gonna find the Jaeger inside the hall. His drone is gonna be taken out. Let's see if he's gonna challenge it. No, he cracked back down. One is gonna be pushing from the top is square. Chromius gets a frag on a Nuggo. Is he gonna be able to find the other one? He doesn't know if anyone's playing Skylight or if there's another one out balcony but he probably will assume yes he's gonna peek it again it's not gonna see anybody at the top doesn't see the gridlock chilling on the floor but given his position to gridlock's not gonna see him either he's not even gonna look pay attention go in his direction at square if chromius repeats it he's definitely gonna find it he's gonna fire randomly into the smoke and chromius is as we had shown before chromius is gonna find the frag on a res as Rez is not paying any attention to the big doorway, Chromius is going to be lit up by the Capitao. Unfortunately, he's going to have to rotate out. Takes quite a bit of damage. Services gets a frag onto Style, however. Defender left up operation. Defender exposed. And he tried to go for the aggressive play there, but he does get punished by Boba Flex. Spectre is going to find a clean headshot onto Rico. Very well done. Bring it to a 1v3 situation. The advantage is definitely looking in Baylor's favor. Boba not doing too hot. If it's any indicator for the potential of him clutching out this round, it's proving to be very unlikely. One currently playing in the bottom of open area's window. One playing in stock. He's not going to see it and it's taken out. Excuse me, by the frost.
So here we go, match points. Rose of Swamp, so Baylor will be attacking. Marion has to defend. They're gonna have to defend like the, the game depends on the fact the game does depend on it. Yep, it's match point here for Baylor, 6-0. and oh. They might be able to close out this map with a 7-0 oh flawless against Marietta. It's very possible the momentum is on their side, but we'll see if Marietta can do a better job playing defense than they had on offense. Joey is going for a Cali pick, a very questionable option. Even though Cali is not a bad operator in the general consensus of this map for the basement side, which will be the most likely Attackers option here and as many for the can. defense, which it is to no surprise. Cali is not going to be able to hold super long angles with her scope. Usually an ACOG will shoot just fine, but I guess Joey is trying to go for some mean shots here. Crazy sniper kill, so and now let's see if he's gonna be able to find it. And in case anyone has any questions about the Cali pick, because it was not a, a permissible pick so far in Collegiate R6, this is the first week where Cali is permissible. They actually announced that on Discord just the other day. So if anyone's like, no, oh, you can't pick Cali, Cali's supposed to be banned. No, Cali is perfectly uh, allowed now. They have allowed Kali, but they still have not allowed the map that was brought with her when she was introduced, which I believe was Theme Park. Actually, it's so, funny you mentioned that. Um, they made a somewhat slight change where there's a bug with Consulate with the lighting. And we've already seen Chromius uh, getting an early kill onto style, but as I was saying, uh, there's a bug with it. So during map picks and bans, if both sides agree to swap out Consulate for Theme Park, that is permissible until the bug is fixed for Consulate. That's unfortunate. A drone is going to find one on smoke. He's going to throw one smoke grenades to cover the doorway and his rotate out. Chromius pushed very quickly out of dirt, but he is going to be fragged as he throws his flashbang through the door by Rez. Not sure from where though. Rez is going to be playing in staff room now. He is pretty sure that there are quite a few people up there with him. He's going to find one. Services, however, is going to find the refrag on Rico downstairs. So we're still at a 3v3. Now it's a 3v2. As Callie uses her CZ to take out Rez with a very nice headshot. Callie is most likely not going to be able to open the hatch as her hard breach is currently downstairs. Mike is going to go for a false plant, try to see if he can bait out the nitro the cell. However, the it doesn't, it looks like Nugo has already expended it. Nugo is taking, so is Boba by services, closing out the map for Baylor. And with that, an impressive map uh, by Baylor. And part of the thing, Marina still needs to work on their aggressiveness on offense. But I mean, credit's still given where credit is due with a, a very impressive uh, game by Baylor. We see services there, 14 uh, kills. Just insane play by him. Yeah, services definitely took advantage of just how slow and honestly scared uh, Marietta was playing. And by taking advantage of that, all they had to really do was really be more aggressive and they could have easily won out the match. But unfortunately, Marietta could not find it in themselves to push harder and which cost them the game and match overall for them giving basically All right, it was fun streaming with you. Oh yeah, I mean, I, that was an absolute uh, blast. I had a, a lot of fun and thank you for willing to do this. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, uh, the viewers from both Twitch channels uh, enjoyed it. Yep, for sure. So some final notes here to, before we close out. Um, a couple things pointed out by chat. Uh, yes, I apologize for the Baylor side's quality. That's because I am currently technically watching a stream of it by Drorgar, and that is because you cannot have two spectators 
in the match at the same time. That is physically impossible. The only way you can do that is if it's less than a 5v5, and I believe it has to be on a land system, which we are on neither of those cases. So yeah, it's that's why we can only have. It's online central yeah. servers. They they really need to open it up to allow multiple spectators, but they just, I don't know if or when they're, they'll ever uh, do that. Yeah, but that's just how Rainbow Six is. A uh, couple other notes. I Yeah, we had a lot of technical He's at the beginning. It's the first time I've ever duo streamed. It's the first time Dorgar has ever duo streamed. So, you know, something new, something to try out. We we want to see how it goes. And I, I think it went pretty well. Yeah. I mean, when you're in a, uh, a Discord channel where you can only have two people, who thought that you needed a third slot to handle the streaming? I mean, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't, I didn't figure that out. I, and eventually found it. it. Took me a minute. But yeah. And yeah, a couple other notes. Stay stay clean, guys. You know, whole situation going on at home right now. Stay do your social distancing. Yes. Maintain hygiene, all that stuff. Yeah, this, we are in very uncertain times and I know the situation can be very scary, but hang in there. Follow the guidelines that uh, the CDC has said. I think the best piece of advice that they gave was assume that you have this. Uh, not just for your sake, but for everyone around you. It, we want to make sure that we protect those who we love and care about. So by making sure that we adhere to those guidelines and, and hunker down and keep your distance is going to help with saving lives. So we can do this. We just have to hang in there. And eventually things will get back to some form of normalcy. But for now, we just have to do our part. Yep. And uh, lastly, to finish it off, close it all out, this has been Dodo. If you guys want to check me out on my own stream on my own time, do.do, it's the exact same spelling with the bread dough and then the dough from Homer Simpson. That is the inspiration for my name. Uh, yeah, come check me out on Twitch. I have a schedule that I do my best to adhere to, but given the online classes that we've been taking, it's been pretty hectic. So it's been a little harder to do just that. but. I am trying my best to keep up with it. Uh, for the Baylor fans, please follow the channel. Keep up to date with any social media. And anytime we go live here on Twitch, I will be the normal caster for Baylor. I will do my best uh, to keep up with the team as I'm not actually a student at Baylor, but I am good friends with a couple of the teammates. So I would love to support my team. And casting is something I do on the side for my own team. So why not? And on the Marietta side, just a couple of programming announcements, just as a reminder. Uh, this Sunday will be our uh, our PUBG team has advanced to the Collegiate PUBG Finals, so they'll be participating in several uh, matches. So the first match of the finals will be this Sunday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, you can check that out on twitch.tv slash Collegiate PUBG. And also uh, a few of our Overwatch players are going to be participating in a 3v3 uh, lockout tournament tomorrow at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to try to broadcast that. Uh, we have to work out a couple of uh, logistics for that, but you can check that out on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Marriott College. Uh, I'm Drogar representing the college, so thank you all for watching. Uh, it's much appreciated. Please be sure to follow us for all of the uh, latest updates of what goes on with Marriott College Esports. You can go to Twitter at Marriott Esports, Facebook.com slash Marriott College Esports. You're also welcome onto our Discord uh, bit.ly slash pio discord the p and the d are capitalized all right hope everyone has a good night this is dodo signing off all right thank you for watching hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and your weekend